Hi, I'm Jen Mulhern, and welcome to Region Tutorial for excerpt number three for all of you cellists that are going to be auditioning for Region 18 Orchestra. This will be one of your finest moments. Um, this is actually a very slow, sustained excerpt. It's very beautiful. It almost reminds me of something you might hear as a lullaby. Um, and to really address this excerpt, uh, you know, you have to point out that sometimes playing slow is more difficult than playing fast. Um, the reason is, is because everything is exposed when you're playing slow. So I'm going to start by just hearing our metronome beat at the performance tempo of 52, which is so slow that I think we'll need to kind of think about a subdivision. So think, think about your quarter note beat. Think about your eighth note beat. And go ahead and even think of 16th notes. Maybe play back and forth between them a little bit. Quarter, eighth note, 16th note. It's important to kind of keep that pulse in your head because when we go slowly, it really takes a lot of control, not only to play, um, but also to count. So here's excerpt number three. I'm going to play it once in its entirety. So after you've really listened to that enough times to get it in your head and almost be able to sing it, um, there's definitely something to the words andante sostenuto. So this is the tempo marking, but it's also a description of the style. Uh, sostenuto is Italian for sustained. So we want to think about the most legato bow, the most smooth bow changes possible. And you heard me on an open string earlier. Maybe that might be a nice warm up for you is just to pick a note maybe one that you can vibrato well, and work a little bit with the left hand and the right hand. We'll talk a little bit more about vibrato, but this bowing is really the, uh, the essence of this entire movement. So if you listen to uh, just the sustain of the notes and you make sure that there's no, no space in between, there's really no rests. Um, in this piece, there's dynamics that rise and fall but there's no moment of silence. We want to make sure all of our half notes and our longer notes really sustain. Two, three. So we notice no space, no break at all in the bow changes. Um, so really to kind of, uh, to capture this style, we need to go a little bit over the left hand because the left hand will be responsible for how our tone sounds. And I think it could really have a moment where your vibrato can shine. Um, now, if you've not done any vibrato, uh, I'll just go through the basics of it. You can start with one of your stronger fingers, like first finger or second finger. Held the elbow up really nice and high. And you might just start with a simple exercise like polishing the string. And sometimes I'll go from a very wide polish where my entire arm feels very consistent all the way up and down. I'm even tracing a single line in my finger that I'm trying to follow. So it's not really this. It's very much... I don't know, I think of it almost like a miniature karate chop or a robot arm. Um, you can actually evolve your vibrato quite a bit from trying this in a smaller section and maybe even applying a little bit of gentle pressure inward, so almost like a hug. So if I start with my first finger and I go more and more narrow and then I eventually hug the cello, I might just have a vibrato pop out and that's when we're just first and thumb are, are uh, weighted to the string. Some of the more difficult fingers, like fourth finger, might have a pairing with third finger. And you can practice that same exercise with any of them to get up to speed. Um, so let's talk about where to apply some of these shifts and, of course, where to vibrato these notes. Uh, the very first shift I'm going to recommend doesn't uh, necessarily have to be done. You can play open A if you need to. <laughs> 
but it doesn't quite have that soothing sound we want. So let's get really familiar with third position. Third position, if you want a quick rundown, is just a fourth finger replaced by a first finger. It can happen on any string. And on this case, we're actually going to be using it quite a bit on both the A and the D strings. So let's try those notes out. In third position, on the A, you've got D, third finger E, and fourth finger F. Over on the D string, you've got G, A, and B flat. Okay, so if you didn't realize this already, we're in a key with um, B flat, and there's no other sharps or accidentals that we can see. So really kind of listen to your shift up here for third finger. You can actually stay there. Then use the open D to shift. All right, did you see where the third position happened? Um, so that's an alternative if you don't want to play open A or if you'd like to vibrato that long half note. Let the thumb, the second finger, and the third finger just drift upward. And that's a shift that you might need to repeat multiple times at home. I would say take it very calm, very relaxed. We're coming from the note of F natural, and we're shifting to third position on a third finger. So maybe just try that a few times isolated. Notice how I'm stopping the bow in between my shift. Just to really practice making sure I'm there. So after you've done that three billion times, um, and you really feel like you can do this effortless, not stressed out at all shift, where it really just floats up to that note, um, then you can use third position quite a bit to your advantage. Uh, let's look for where it comes up again. We have the beginning. to this measure, it is 32, and it sounds just like an F major scale. Kind of nice, isn't it? Try it once on your own. Really go through the fingering with low one, B flat, and then shift to D, first finger. That's one option. There are some other ideas for fingerings, but this is the one that I like the best because it ends up on fourth finger F. It allows you to walk right back down to step across instead of playing open A in measure 34. You can get that nice, soft, fuzzy A natural right on the third finger, then shift. Right before 36, there's a huge octave jump from F natural to the upper F natural. That's another great shift to really work on. Stop the bow. I really feel my hand keep connected with the string, right? My fingers really slide. If I know I'm going to land on a fourth finger, I secretly slide on the fourth finger. So that really kind of keeps the contact with the string and allows the bow eventually to, to change without really hearing the shift or the bow change. Um, so in the pickup to 36, we've got the low F. We find ourselves in the exact same spot as we were a few measures ago. Shift back. So, a couple of pointers to remember. First of all, this piece is in F major and a simple one octave F major scale with a shift for the last three notes will take you through many of the fingerings that you'll need. Um, and here's one other thing to kind of observe the dynamics. This is where you'll really, really win over uh, your listeners or your judges. Um, it starts mezzo forte, and so we're not gonna put too much effort into the bow strength, just a nice pure tone. And then we see a diminuendo 
So we're gonna get really soft. All the way to piano. Now here's our crescendo. So it's fun to practice that scale with the full crescendo. Then listen. It goes back down to piano. We shift back up and we have three notes to reach forte, crescendo. Diminuendo, back to piano. If you can make those huge round dynamic shapes, um, you're really going to exhibit a little bit of your uh, um, powers of observation and also your maturity as a player to really control this slow excerpt. So back to vibrato, um, definitely vibrato every half note. You should probably include all of the dotted quarters as well. So anytime you see a repeated note, I want you to vibrato. Let's talk about those three. Um, there's a half note in 29. It's an A, it's the one I asked you to try to shift for. Okay, if you can vibrato that A, some people feel better with just the third finger or you might actually put second finger down for balance. Um, if you've tried your polish the string, and you're getting better at your vibrato, a good way to refine your vibrato is to try different speeds. For instance, here's a really slow speed. And I'm just gonna change bows whenever I feel like it. It's a nice slow bow and a nice slow oscillation. Okay, then I'm gonna pick a rhythm that's a little quicker. How about one and two and three, go. Again, change bows when you can. Practice both the bow control and you can hear the rhythm of the vibrato. So I might speed it up a little bit more. And I'm going for as wide and as round as I can. Notice my elbows up. Um, so this half note right here when you hit it. Land first and just try giving it a little wiggle. It'll actually really shape that note. Uh, there's a half note there, there's one here. Several measures later. Here's a second finger F natural. So see if you can't let a little vibrato into that note as well. Um, here's a fun one, fourth finger. It happens quite a bit on F natural. One thing about fourth finger is I will take my thumb really loosely off the back of the neck. I will pair my third finger with my pinky and I'll hug with all of my might, not like this, but with the elbow up. Let's try it once with no vibrato at all. You can really feel the pressure of the cello sinking into your chest. So now it's time to really see if we can move the hand around and still suction cup to that note. So think slow, wide vibrato and refine it from there. The thing we don't want is the nervous, jittery vibrato that makes everybody feel like they're shaking. All right, so those are uh, some ideas for where to vibrato. Any kind of half note or dotted quarter. And certainly any time that you feel comfortable to be on a finger that you can just let a little bit of vibrato in, it's really gonna shape this etude. So I wish you good luck. I wish you all the bow control and vibrato that you can improve for the next few weeks. That'll really help take this piece to the next level. Thanks so much and have a good one.